Hello everybody, this is African Anecdotes TV and today I want us to talk about the Bantu, more specifically a book I came across called The Origin of the Bantu by J.F. Van Audit, written in 1907. Now please take note that this book has been written by, you know, the white so-called explorers uh, colonialists whatever you want to call them and they were studying our people and so when we take a look at these books we may be able to grasp a couple of things here and there but please bear in mind that there may be some lies there may be some uh, half truths there may be some exaggerations but nevertheless there are some things that i have highlighted that stood out for me that I found to be pretty interesting and that I want to share with my viewers. So let's get into it. So the author says that he considers the presence of a distinct Assyrian or rather Babylonian element in several Bantu dialects. And so he is entitled to come to the conclusion that the Sumerian Babylonian influence on Bantu must have proceeded directly from the mouths of the Tigri and Euphrates, and that by means of an immigration from that part of Asia. I tend to think myself that the Bantu came from the north, um, be it the Middle East, be it Egypt, but I tend to think personally that the Bantu came from the north. And so the author in this 19 book states that there is a Babylonian element in several Bantu dialects, and distinct Assyrian Babylonian element. And he talks about the Sumerians as well, of which I believe that the Sumerians were black stroke dark people i have not yet uh, concluded in my mind whether they were black you know african black or you know the the, the dark type of uh, black we see in the south indian people but i am convinced that yes the sumerians were dark skinned people and so the author continues in his book the origin of the bantu and as far as he is concerned, he says that the Bantu language belongs to that group of languages generally known as the Ugro Altaic, which uh, historians no longer use that term. And he says the fact that in the Bantu language there are two distinct groups of words, one of which is far more archaic than the other, entitles us to come to the conclusion that there have been two Bantu invasions of Africa, which I believe most historians also agree. And as far as the author is concerned, he says that the first Bantu invasion of Africa commenced from some part in or near Hindustan. And the language of these first invaders is directly connected with the non-Aryan languages of India. And he says that the second Bantu invasion of Africa started from the mouths of the Tigri and Euphrates and probably took place about the year 680 BC. That is what the author says, that the invasion, the migration of the Bantu into Africa started from the mouths of the Tigri and the Euphrates, which is uh, in Iraq. He has another point where he says that as far as he, his research has brought him, the real original home of the Bantu race is the peninsula of Malacca, the peninsula of Malacca. That is the real original home of the Bantu. Tell me guys, do you agree with that? And so he also 
made some distinction in the languages that I found to be interesting. Because as far as he can see, he says that according to the Sumerian language, Aka means to make or build. Why did that stand out for me? Because I am Kenyan from the Kikuyu tribe. And in our language, in the Kikuyu tribe, Aka means to build. To build a house. Nyaraka nyoba building a house and so i found that to be interesting that the sumerians say aka in their language that is what they used to say which means to make the zulu also according to the author aka also means to make or build and according to the kamba who are a tribe in kenya kuaka also means to make or to build and so I guess that is why he makes the Sumerian um, Bantu connection here the author continues it will also be noticed that a large number of Bantu words are directly traceable to Sumerian with but very slight changes and hence the question arises whether we are on that account entitled to consider the Bantu a considerable portion of them as direct descendants from a Sumerian stock. That is the author's view, that is the author's opinion in this book written in 1907. Whether he changed later, I do not know, but he considers that the Bantus a direct descendants from a Sumerian stock. I really cannot say that he is crazy because I firmly believe the Sumerians were dark skinned people. I lean towards the fact that they are really South Indians, you know, uh, those dark Asians. Uh, I must have read somewhere that the Tamil language and the Sumerian language are very, very, very close. But well, all the same, according to this author, the Bantus may very well be direct descendants from a Sumerian stock. And so the author says in another part of his book that there is, as every Bantu scholar knows, a very strong Semitic element in several of the Bantu languages and a strong Semitic physical element which cannot be of purely Arabian origin is very noticeable in some of the Bantu tribes living in the neighborhood of the river Niger in West Africa. A very strong Semitic element in several of the Bantu languages that is the author's view and uh, there are people who believe that the bantus come from the line of shem not really from the line of ham as some scholars have suggested and i guess as time goes on the truth will be revealed he continues there is however another and older Semitic element in some Bantu languages which cannot be referred to Arabic and which I am convinced is of Assyrian origin. The most striking instance of this is found in the Shona language, actually Shona, or as they call themselves, the Makalanga. A very fair dictionary of this Shona language, he says, has been published by some Mzungu of the London Missionary Society. So he is convinced that the Shona language is also Semitic, an older uh, Semitic element in the Shona language. He says in another part of the book, the Maasai, I venture to suggest, are probably the descendants of those Asmak mentioned in Herodot Herodotus 2 30 
as being Egyptian soldiers who deserted and emigrated to Ethiopia. The Maasai, uh, my dear viewers, are a tribe which can be found in Kenya and also in Tanzania. So the author says that uh, his suggestion is that the Maasai are descendants of those people who were Egyptian soldiers who deserted and emigrated to Ethiopia. Herodotus places this emigration in the time of King Sameticus, but it probably took much, took place much earlier. And so, in my view, as I said before, I believe that you know the, the Bantu and other tribes uh, came from the north. And so, when this author says that the Maasai are descendants of these Egyptian soldiers. I really cannot say that he is completely uh, off. And so, viewers, uh, that was the book, The Origin of the Bantu, written in 1907. And I like to read these old books and just try to see uh, what was happening back in the day as pertains to Africa, you know, the geography, the peoples. And so I share this not really believing 100% in what the authors are saying. We're just trying to glean because really our ancestors didn't really write much. They, they, they relied on oral traditions. So I have to take the information that I have from these old sources. What do you think, guys? Is this author completely nuts? Or are there some points that you have probably also heard out there? See you next time.